In our last video, we looked at how to create shapes with a pencil tool, and we're going to continue our exploration through the tools, and we're just going to go ahead and click on the shape and hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And we're going to go ahead and come over to the side, and we're going to click on this tool, which is called the rectangle tool. You'll also notice that there's a little arrow in the bottom corner of it, and just like in Photoshop, whenever you see that little arrow in the bottom corner, it means there are other tools behind that tool. So we can click and hold down on the rectangle tool, and we'll see that there's a number of other tools here as well. So we have the rectangle tool, rounded rectangle tool, ellipse, polygon star, and flare tools. We're going to go ahead and just start off with the rectangle tool, though. And we're going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle right here in the middle of our artboard. You'll notice that because of the way that I had it set from last time when we did our pencil, it still kept that fill and stroke. And that's just a good reminder that we can change the fill of our shapes as well, just the same way as we did when we created the pencil tool. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and put that on white for our fill. I'm going to go ahead and keep a stroke on black and I'm going to actually make this a little bit thinner maybe change it to about five points so that it's just a little bit easier to work with. This leads us to our next tool that we want to look at which is up in the top left hand corner it's called the selection tool and this is how we select and do a few other different um, operations with our shape. So when I have the selection tool selected, you'll notice I have all these dots around my shape. The first thing that we want to look at is these little circles that are inside the corners. If you click on these and drag them down, you'll see that it rounds the corners of your shape. It's kind of a nifty tool to be able to use to be able to create some unique shapes. Um, and you'll find that you may use that occasionally as well. And as you pull that in, you'll notice that all the corners round as well. But for now, we're going to go ahead and hit Command Z on our keyboard just to reset that back to normal and undo that. In the middle of each of these lines, these are called anchor points. And you'll see that I can click on these. I can drag these up and down to create a different shape with my rectangle. And I can do the same on the sides to create a uh, different shape with that as well. And if I go to the corners and the anchor points on the corners, I can scale the shape up and down. Again, similar to Photoshop, if I hit shift on my keyboard, it keeps the same dimensions or the same proportions rather as I scale it. If I scale it without holding shift, then I can change it and have a little bit more free form as I change the scale. And then finally, if I just go right above the corner of it, you'll see that I have kind of this curved arrow. And this is my rotation. So I'm able to rotate my shape around using this little curved arrow. And that's by just going above the corner of it there. Okay, so that's this selection tool, and that's when we create shapes. And we can change the fill and the stroke just like we could when we drew with a pencil. But one other thing that Illustrator is really good at is allowing you to combine shapes together. And Illustrator is a great tool, and it's not just a tool, though, for people that are artistic or that can draw really well. So you don't have to be able to draw well in order to use Illustrator well. You just have to be able to think about what it is that you want to accomplish and what it is that you're trying to do. And if you can think well, then you can actually create really good things with Illustrator. So what I want to do is I want to actually combine a couple shapes together here to create a new shape, one that would be hard to draw on its own, but by combining shapes together is actually going to make it pretty easy. So I'm going to come back over to the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and hold down on it so that I select the polygon tool. What I really want to do is I really want to add some triangles onto the end of this, but you'll see that the triangle is not an option here. So I can use the polygon tool and the polygon tool is pretty neat in the way it works. As I click and hold down on it and as I'm still holding down the on my mouse and clicking down, 
So I'm still pushing down. I can still change the size of it as I go. You'll notice that um, as I am able to change the size of it by still holding down on the mouse, I can go over to my keyboard and hit the up or down arrows to change the number of sides that it has. So by hitting the up arrow, I add more sides. By hitting the down arrow, I take away sides. And what, by doing that, I then am able to create a triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and just create this triangle here. And I want to go ahead and add it so it goes basically right on the end of my rectangle. Maybe going to rotate it just a little bit so that it is, looks like it's pretty close so that the ends match up there. And that's exactly what I want to happen. The next thing that I want to do is just make it so that this triangle overlaps with this rectangle just a little bit. Once I've done that, I actually want to put another triangle over here on this side. However, I don't want to have to try to redraw this triangle again and redraw it so that it's the same size. I want it to be exactly the same size. So, what I'm going to do is on my keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and hit Option. And you'll see that when I hit Option and I go kind of over the uh, line here that on my, my mouse turns into two different cursors. When I do that, I'm able to click on my triangle and drag it over and it will create a duplicate copy of that shape. And so in this way, I'm able to create that same shape without having to redraw it and re try to make it be exactly the same size. Now, I want this to be facing the other way. So I could try to rotate it and see if I could rotate it around. You'll see that I have this uh, degrees here, and that tells me how many degrees I rotated it. So I could try to rotate it exactly and get it to fit there. The other option that you have is you could go up to object, you could go to transform, and you could go to rotate. And you could actually just type in how many degrees you want it to rotate. And by doing that, you would be able to get it to rotate exactly. So if I put 180 degrees, for instance, it would rotate exactly that number, which would get it so that it fits right as where I want it to go. The last thing that you'll see is that um, I can try to get it centered again so that it matches up in the same spot as the previous shape that I did. Let me move it just a little bit further. And once I have both of my shapes in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to combine these together. And by combining them together, it will create one new shape. So in order to do that, I just have to select all three of these shapes. I can select all three of these shapes just by taking my selection tool and clicking and dragging a box over them so that it selects all of them. I do have to have all of them selected. And when I do that, I'm going to come up to Window, and I'm going to scroll down to Pathfinder. When I click on Pathfinder, it will give me this little box that pops up, and it will give me some options of different things that I can do. You see it says Shape Modes, and the first one is called Unite, Minus Front, Intersect, and Exclude. I want to use this one, this one that looks like two boxes that are overlapping, and it says Unite. And when I click on that, you see that it unites all three of those shapes together into one new shape. So it kind of creates this little banner shape here. This would be a hard shape to draw on my own, but just by knowing how to combine shapes together, I'm able, I'm able to create this new shape and create something new. So your task for today is going to be to try to create a new shape by using at least three other shapes and then uniting them together.